The loneliest I've been was in my marriage. From the Sydney Herald or something like that. <laughs> Thank you for finding that quote, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, good morning, dear saints, brothers and sisters. Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello. Good morning. The will of man, the will of God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Colossians chapter 2. Hmm. Read along with me, please. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read along with me. Read, see, hear what we're reading today. Okay, be a Berean. And please, please, don't trust me. Trust the scriptures. Don't trust me. Don't trust me. Okay? Trust the Word of God, the authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration Word of God. And, and dear friend, the NKJV, non-King James Version, is not the Word of God. Okay, yes, I, to my knowledge, it has all the verses in there, but it's totally contrary to the authorized version. And anyway, just wanted to mention that. Colossians 2, verses 18 on to 23. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. <laughs> okay? You got these uh, twits who claim that they've seen God. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You've seen something. Sure. I, I, you know what? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I don't, I do not, um, I do not, you know, speak against these people who claim to have seen God. I don't doubt that they've seen <laughs> something. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. Uh, but they... <laughs> Have not seen God. You, uh, you know, anyone comes around claiming to have seen God today, especially in this dispensation. Well, I saw him in a dream. Oh, yeah, yeah, seen God, huh? Video on that in the description box. But let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. And the angel video should be in the uh, description box as well. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly carnal mind. Well, now that's a loaded verse. We've talked about this uh, verse. Um, actually, I, I think we spake about it on Sunday. Okay. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Worshipping of angels. These guys who claim that they've seen God. You have not seen God. You may indeed have seen something, but you have not seen the Father. And Jesus is the Father. Okay, you have not. But vainly puffed up by his fleshly carnal mind. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. But fleshly mind, puffed up by it, by your thoughts and what you can convince yourself of. Mm. And not holding the head, capital H, the head of the body is Christ. From which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. 
Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Perfect example, the Roman Catholic Church and all their doctrines of men. Don't touch, don't eat, don't do this. You know, on certain days of the week or certain days of the month and that kind of stuff. Okay? Doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship. And that's not Will Smith, brother, or Will or Grace, brother. Okay? Stop that. <laughs> Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will, worship, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. The will of man. The will of man is actually very powerful. If you ever wanted something so bad that you would go to any length to get it? Hmm? It's like, how could someone claiming to be saved have such a dramatic turn of events in their life, but yet the Lord be not the one who is the author of it? I tried to do this video on Monday, but the Lord wasn't having it, <laughs> by the way, brother. Um, uh, with what has happened with me, you need to know this. What has happened with me before is, and this has happened quite a bit, get, you know, give like the, here the old notes for the, or the original thing that I, we, we tried on Monday. Um, I was going through it, and midway, like 29 minutes into the video, it went dead. Just like, wow, you don't want me to speak about this. And it's like, okay. Turn off the video. It's like, okay, leave it alone. And then go over the notes and totally different. <laughs> Why? Because his will be done. Not my will be done. See, the will of man is very, very powerful. Very powerful. And will worship. What man is capable of doing when the, their will is put to it. For example, if you truly want to quit smoking those disgusting cigarettes or quit vaping, if you really want to do it, okay, you can. You can. Look at the Alcoholics Anonymous, who, whose um, you know higher power is a doorknob. Okay, they can clean up their lives through the sheer power of their own will. But see, the repugnant part of this is that there are people who will claim that they got saved and they will have a change, a complete, total change, but yet. Still be lost. Hmm. Number one, the question is, which God are you? Which God did they go to? Which God did they go to? Hmm. And within a time frame of five years, too, brother, there could still be some naivety there. There still could be some aftergrowth or whatever, or whatever they call it. Um, you know, generally speaking, if a saint has walked with the Lord five years, you know, no, not generally. I mean, there could still be some remnants of being a babe there. There still could be. But, you know, the more you walk with the Lord, and especially, too, if someone's claiming to be saved, for like five years and they've had a total change 
of who they are and they reject and don't even believe that the authorized version is perfect and they believe in a lot of crazy stuff uh, there, there is a small scant measure that could be like well still maybe a little babe in them or something like that but I mean that is possible but eh. but see man's will Look at the free gracers. Perfect example. They save themselves by their belief. And then when you try to talk to these twits, it's like, okay, all right, were you broken of your self-righteousness? Some say, well, yeah, yeah, well, we're all sinners. It's like, oh, boy. And then you talk with them about Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse uh, 18, and then you scratch these guys. It's like, I'm better than so-and-so. But I saved myself. I'm saved because I, I just believe. Hmm. The will of God, of course, is greater. Of course, of course. And we're going to look at that. But... Man's will, man's will is very powerful. It's a, no, it is not as powerful as the will of God, absolutely not. But there again, see, man has free will. Okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. See, someone goes to the wrong God and have a complete change. Number one, what God did they go to? That, that, before you get into anything else about the power of the will of man in such a, a case, brother, you, you get, it's like, okay, what, what, God, what God did you go to? Okay? What God did you go to? Okay? And also, too, in observance, I didn't see what you saw, and I don't want to. Okay, you, you're not a babe. You, you got your head on right. You know what you're doing. Okay, but, um, you know, who is getting the glory? Was he, was he boasting the Lord through himself or himself through the Lord? Hmm? And if you want a good example of someone boasting themselves through the Lord, and not the Lord through themselves. There's this guy from out northeast. Okay? But we, we, we're not talking about that today. We're not. Done. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 14. You know, the phrase, will of man, does appear in Scripture. But we're going to see something. John chapter 1. 1 on to 14. In the beginning was the capital W word. That's important. Why? This is the Lord himself, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Three of the seven times that capital W word appears in the authorized version scriptures okay now and the word was god is not a past tense it's a present tense it's like he was god okay it's not past tense in that context it is not past tense okay he was god okay he was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Who is the, the capital W word? What is this talking about? Go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. 1 on to 3. Here's the Godhead. Here's the Godhead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, 
and the capital S, Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And God said, God said, spake everything into existence. Okay? God spake. God, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. All things were made by him. John chapter 1 verse 3. And without him was not anything made that was made. The Father, the capital W word, which the Bibles usually take out, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Not three persons that make one God. That's Satanic heresy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay? And the light... Oh, excuse me. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus is the light. And right there, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, 4 on to 7. See, like we have talked about before, you, you know, a Polaroid, and you take a picture, and they're, they're, your eyes are glowing. Okay, you can see the light reflecting in your eyes. A corpse, a dead body doesn't have that. Why? Because you're dead. The light is not in your eyes. That doesn't mean lost people are saved. No, what that means is Jesus Christ is the one who gave you life. God the Father, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, gave you life. Genesis 2, 4 to 7. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field what, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Okay? A living soul. So, in him was life. The life was the light of men, the light in the eyes. Like I said, you take a Polaroid or a picture and you hold it and at the right angle, your, your eyes look like headlights on cars, right? Why? That's, that's showing the light of life that was given to you of the Lord. Okay, that does not mean that you're saved. No, it does not. But it, what it shows you is that you have life and that life was given you of Jesus Christ. Okay? Your, your belief on that atheist, okay, is irrelevant. That is the fact. You are alive because the Lord allowed it. Okay? And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm. Comprehended it not. And, and what is that in John 3? Hmm. What is that in John 3? Verses 19 on to 21. And this is the commendation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, 
neither cometh to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. Yes. See, that's why a lot of Christians hate Jesus Christ who is. They prefer this three God thing that Catholicism created. Okay. Well, uh, it was created by Babylon, perfected in Egypt, or crafted in Egypt, excuse me, perfected in Rome. But um, that's why they like anything else except the God who is. One God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But, you know, when you read the authorized version of the scriptures, see, the Lord has this habit of putting his finger on that one thing you lack. And see, a lot of you know that. That's why you don't like the authorized version. Because you ain't getting away from this, right? And see, when you are a worshiper of your own will, which is very powerful. Oh, we're going we're gonna to look at the testimony that God himself even gives of that. Okay? When you are a worshiper of your own will, and the authorized version of the scripture, which bears witness of that light, was Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of you guys who are will worshipers, and that's not will and grace, brother. Um, they like, don't like it. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Okay? Uh, back to John chapter 1, 6 on the 9. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that capital L light that all men through him might believe. Question! Did Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. Christian, listen to me. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden, in the patriarchal period, under the law, or even before the, right before the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't know about it until it happened, or else you would have a clear contradiction with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7, okay? They were not looking forward to the cross. That's a lie that even these stupid free gracers throw at you, that they were looking for. No, they were not. There were, there were witnesses of it in Scripture, but... Man didn't know until it happened. Okay? So please, please, don't fall for that one. Okay? Don't fall for that one. But had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. So what was the belief in if it wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection? See, they got, those, those guys kind of lied to you about that in order to make their heretical just believe and receive doctrine, dry, uh, doctrine fit. But that's not what was going on. Jesus was sent on to who? The Hebraic Jewish people. The Mashiach, the king. And that's what their faith, faith was supposed to be in. Him as king. Not in the death, burial, and resurrection, which hadn't happened yet, and they were not aware of until it happened. Okay? Watch out for that one. Okay? He was not that light. John was not that light. He was not the Mashiach. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Again, verse 9 uh, reestablishes, not reestablishes, reinforces verses 4 and 5. Okay? You're alive, an atheist, Shintoist, Taoist, Buddhist, Hinduist, it don't matter what you believe about this. The fact is, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is God the Father, and Jesus Christ gave you life. Your belief on that is irrelevant. That's just the way it is. See, son? That's just the way it is. And unfortunately for a majority of you, especially you Christians, you're not going to find that out 
until it's too late. And see, some of you Christians will have it even worse because you've heard the truth and you will not hear. But see, now also too, in doing research to get this uh, Psalm 83, that's coming eventually, brother. I haven't forgot about you. Okay, it takes time, okay? Especially to do it right. Uh, but when looking up into this Psalm 83 thing about how these people just, God, I really divide the word of truth. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. But um, there are those out there who say that John the Baptist was Elijah. When John the Baptist was asked plainly, art thou the Messiah? And he's like, no, art thou that prophet, meaning Elijah? No, no, he wasn't. What was John the Baptist? Isaiah 40. There will be a link for you in the description box, you, you deceived heretics who like to say that John the Baptist was a... No, he wasn't. He came in the spirit of Elijah. Yes, yes. We, 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 we cover that in the video, The Spirit of Elijah which will be in the description box for you, okay? John the Baptist, they asked him! And he's like, no, I'm not the Christ, no, I'm not that prophet, meaning Elijah. No, I'm not. He came in the spirit of Elijah. There's a big difference, and we describe, we talk about that in the video, in the description box. So you check that out. Yeah, brother, there are those out there who, even though Scripture plainly says, that John the Baptist was not Elijah. There are people out there who says that he was. These Christians. <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> oh. <sighs> anyway. Elijah. Elijah, excuse me. Isaiah 40, 6 on the 9. Isaiah 40, 6 on to 9. 3 on to 9. Excuse me, what was I, what did I write here? 3 on to 8. I'm sorry, I wrote down the entirely wrong thing. Okay, Isaiah 40, 3 to 8. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Valley. And every mountain and hill. Valley. Mountain. Hill. Or, okay. Height thing going on there. Valley is low. Okay. Mountain is high. A hill is a little lower than a mountain, but still high. Making reference on to what? See, this is an incident where God is using natural elements to describe things of mankind. Okay? The valley. Publicans and harlots. The mountains. Pharisees. The hills. The Sadducees. Okay? And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. They, they load you grievous things to be born, but yet they themselves won't even lift a finger to do it themselves. Okay? And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. The Spirit, like a dove, like a dove, came down on the Lord as a public thing to announce, that's the Messiah. <laughs> that, that's him right there. See that? Don't, whoop, that's him. It was a thing of identification. The baptism of Jesus. Okay? And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And the voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Now see right there, flesh, grass, the right direct tie-in of speak using natural elements to, re, to talk about <laughs> natural elements. Flesh, okay? 
and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Lord says, Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. Here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. What is your life? It's a vapor. Okay? The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The authorized version of the scriptures. Thank you very much. Okay? Back to, uh, John. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Verses 10 on to 11. All right? He, the Lord Jesus Christ, now he's not, not talking about John. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. God said. Okay? Capital W word. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Jesus Christ is a Hebraic Jew of the Hebraic line that came of Shem. You Hamites are not Hebrews. That is impossible. Okay? Us Japhethites, as much as some of you want to believe it, us Japhethites are not Hebrews. It's impossible. Even Shemites themselves, such as the Japanese, the Chinese, the Korean, those of Thailand, okay? They are Shemites. The American Indian, Shemites, okay? They're not Hebrews. The Hebraic people stem of Shem. Yes, they do. But they were taken out of Shem. But they come from Shem, okay? So that tells us what? That not all Shemites are Hebrews themselves, okay? See, what is a Hebrew, and you do the, we've done this before, okay? Hebrew, the first appearance, is tied onto who? Abram, who had become Abraham. That, that's pretty simple. And when your heritage, your lineage, traces directly back to Ham or Japheth, Guess what, cousin? You're not a Hebrew. It's impossible. Okay? All right? You dear black Hebrew Israelites, you're all liars, you're all heretics, and you're all deluded in your brain by trying to say that you're Hebrews. It's impossible. You can't be a Hebrew. Okay? Nor can I, nor can I have Japheth. Okay? Some of the Shemites have a little better standing because the Hebrews came out of Shem. But that's the thing. The, the, the Japanese and the Chinese and the Korean and those of Thailand and Tibet and, and, and Mongolia and stuff like that, they're, they're Shemites. The American Indian, they're Shemites. But they're not Hebrews. And even though some of them Japanese people, um, wow, I <laughs> love you guys, okay? All right? So, he came on to his own. The Hebraic Jewish people. He was sent to the Hebrews. Okay? Unlike what the morons tell you. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, I've, I've talked with moron, Mormons. Okay? Bless their heart. And I mean that in a southern way. You know, <laughs> Mormons actually think that Jesus came to America, to New York of all places, I guess. It's like, dude, dude, Jesus was not sent unto the Gentiles. Okay, he, he, he's, a, he's a Hebrew, and he was sent unto his own, the Hebraic people, okay? <laughs> that, that, that you know it's like um, the one out here when the one guy, kid was talking about that I, 
I, I, I did my best. Um, unfortunately, you know, I blew that moment because I couldn't contain myself. He was like, well, you know, Jesus was in America. And I'm like, <laughs> and I couldn't contain myself. I, you know, I just, I, just, I laughed at him. And I, I, unfortunately, don't do that, brother. Even though, even though we, brother, even though we know the truth, um, don't do like what I've done. That, that's bad. That's bad. But anyway, anyway, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. See, they said, hey, this is the heir. Let us kill him. Then the inheritance will be ours. Have that will of man willing to kill their Mashiach who they would not receive, who they would not receive. Isaiah 53, verses 1 on 3. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? His own arm saved him. You see reference of that in the scripture. The arm of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. See, the effeminate Roman Catholic Jesus, with the somewhat, <laughs> again, they turned uh, Jesus into a Japhethite, okay? Oh, with his blonde hair, blue eyes, okay? I remember, oh, what was that kid? Bryce did that, you know, he, he thought that Jesus was, <laughs> thought Jesus was a Caucasian with blood, no, no. Or even the Hamites, you know, they askew, you know, his uh, hair was like wool, white like wool. And they say, well, Afro hair is like that. Uh, white hair is what that meant, okay? All right, <laughs> all right. It is highly unlikely that the Lord Jesus Christ had an afro. Okay? All right? We, we read that the, the locks of his hair were black and bushy like a raven. Okay? That's talking about Solomon. Yes, but the, for the instruction of, in righteousness, you can link that. You know, Lord Jesus Christ, the king, his love for his Gentile bride. Okay? But anyway, even some of the Hamitic depictions of Jesus, of the Hamite Jesus, um, they all make him this beautiful, beautiful person. Now to we saints, of course, Lord, his beauty is beyond compare, but we have never seen him with our eyes. Okay? We haven't. And see right here, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh was not what we would attribute as a handsome man. It's right there, pal! Where do you get this? Oh, he's so brilliant. Yes, the blood of Jesus Christ is precious. The Lord to us is precious. We have not seen him. We see him through the body of Christ, but physically... Like they did before they said, no, 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 we don't. This tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, was not something, no beauty that we should desire him. And see, the contrary is, when you compare this with Ezekiel 28 and Satan, with all those precious eye candy stones, huh? Yeah, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, huh? Huh? Why do you think sin looks so beautiful? But yet what is actual and authentic to our eyes as man at the first, especially to the sagging sin suit, there's no beauty. Why? Because it's contrary to us. 
Christianity isn't really contrary to the flesh, is it? Especially when you got guys boasting themselves and their pedigree and their accomplishments and look at us, huh? See, Christianity placates while the faith once delivered onto the flesh eradicates. Remember, Paul said he had no confidence in the flesh. Well, it's Christian. Well, you can, well, you can get bodily with Christians. Huh? We're not going there, but I just have to mention that. Well, what's your, what's your faith in, huh? Oh, Jesus, huh? King James Version, huh? But yet you boast of yourselves all the day long. But enough, you get the point. Verse, two, uh, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. See, you got to remember, too, when Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, when he was born, they did the things required in the law for a firstborn male. Okay? All right? They did the offering and whatnot like that for the firstborn, for the male. Okay, as according to the law, along with circumcision. Okay? So, but see right there. Jesus was circumcised the eighth day. Okay? All right? Hence, with that circumcision, bound to the law. Okay? Bound to the law. The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Jesus Christ, listen to me, you devil. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh never became God. And see, with that circumcision at, eight, at the eighth day, and what was offered according to the law, according to that, see, bound to the law, and he never sinned and kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified by God in flesh, keeping the law perfectly. Okay? All right? But see, someone who wants to gratify it, they take offense and negate to that, don't you? <coughs> and thus, revealing to where your will really is. But see, our Father, Jesus Christ, is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So, God in flesh was tempted. The flesh was tempted by the same kind of things that you and I experience every day. But yet he never sinned. See, God can't be tempted to sin, but God in flesh, the flesh can be, but God himself cannot. Okay? And with that, and brother, oh brother, we can get into some really deep stuff with that, which we have before in the past. But there is a persona of a way of that separation, meaning that circumcision made without hands. A precursor to it. Okay? But, he was a, he is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. You know, there were women that ministered to Jesus. Use your imagination with that. Okay? He went through a lot of the same things that you and I go through every day. But see, he, he can't sin. He's God. But see, he did. So the Lord has an understanding of that loneliness. The Lord has an understanding of that desire. Why? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God, God became flesh. Flesh never became God. 
except for Roman Catholics. Okay? And we, uh, continuing in verse 3, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. See, Christianity is so beautiful. Look at what it offers you. Hey, you can become part of a little, um, a little obscure clique of people for the man at the tippy top. Yeah. When the faith that was delivered on, once delivered on to the saints, I don't want that. <laughs> See, that alone ought to tell you people something, okay? All right? That alone, that alone ought to tell you something. But now, go back to first, uh, first count. Go back to John chapter 1 now. Picking up at verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Question! Tiberian rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. They were not looking forward to the cross and they didn't even know about it until it happened. So what was the faith in, if not the death, burial, and resurrection? Him as Mashiach, the son of David, king of the Jews, come to here is the kingdom of heaven. That's what their faith was in before the death, burial, and resurrection because they did not know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. Okay? That's why the stupid free gracers lie about that and say they were looking forward to the cross. That way they can lie to you and say, well, the faith was in the death, burial, and resurrection. How could it have been when they didn't know about it? They had a mention, kind of, uh, yes, in Scripture, but they were not looking forward to it. They didn't know about it. Or else, again, what do you do with Ephesians 3? What do you do with Ephesians 3? What do you do with Peter? It's like, this shall not be um, to you, Lord. Huh? Come on. Come on. But, but as many as received him, received him, choice, free will, free will, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. There are some of these Christians out there who, like Calvinists, uh, claim that man does not have free will. We do. Okay? Calvinists tell you that elect and non-elect, that in salvation you have no choice. God wills one to go to heaven, God wills the other to go to hell. But the Calvinist is tricky. It's like, well, in that capacity of what God chose for you, you have free will. That's, see, that's sneaky how they do that. It's like, we're not against free will, but see, when it comes to salvific matters, you don't have free will, okay? You don't. And see, that's where it's like God's pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to be saved, or Satan's pointing a gun at your head, for no, 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 no. That is why when you got a heretic like Scott that comes around saying that the faith of Jesus is what you got, uh, his actual literal faith and not your own faith, then you're a robot, you're a machine. It's been done for you in that fact that you have no choice because it's not even your response to his grace. See, our faith is, his resp is our, our, our response to his grace. And when you say, well, it's not even your faith, it's the faith of Jesus' faith, actually, then no, that's veiled, um, it is, veiled uh, Calvinism, okay? Man has free will. And there are Christians out there who say that we don't have free will. That God's this oppressive individual who makes the decision for you. Really? Okay? Okay? But as many as received him, choice, free will, God does not force salvation. You will not find anywhere where God forces salvation or lack thereof on anyone. Pharaoh, huh? 
Yeah. Remember about Pharaoh, you devil? Please. Pharaoh, in his heart, before anything happened, believed that he was a big G God. And see, when you're at that point, um, the impossible is possible with God, but when you are at that point in the will of your heart to believe that you are your own God to the extent that, hey, even you atheists can back, the, uh, back that up, that the pharaohs actually thought they themselves to be a big G God. So the Lord's like, okay, okay here, I'm just going to continue to lead you along in your delusion, okay? They like to go to Pharaoh. They do. They, I, I, they do. That's what they do. It's like, well, Pharaoh, I'm God for... No. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. God is not a monster who forces himself upon you. Okay? I, I, I know there are those of you twits out there who want to believe that God is this forceful guy who has forced you to be lost or forced you to go that, no, 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 no. Okay? Second Chronicles 24. <laughs> hey, brother, sister, when is the last time you read <laughs> First and Second Chronicles? <laughs> you, ought, you, you ought to do that sometime. I know about First Chronicles chapters 1 on to verse 15. To this day, those chapters are the most difficult for me to read myself personally. They are. I, my, my mouth goes numb, man. You know, trying to accurately pronounce all... Wow. Wow. You, you, could, you could spend eight hours in just one chapter from First Chronicles uh, 1 on to verse 15. Okay? I get it, but... When was the last time you read that stuff? Anyway, just wanted to say that, okay? Second Chronicles 24, 15 on the 22. But Jehoiada waxed old. Am I in the right place? Yes, I am. And was full of days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. Hmm. Hearken, made a choice, if you will. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and idols wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. They made a choice. See, even from, from the Garden of Eden, free will was there. Okay, man has free will. How come God allows all this stuff? Man has free will. God isn't a monster to for Hey! What happens when you touch a hot pan? It burns you. Okay? You made the choice to touch it. Once you burn it, what happens? Ow! You make a choice not to go and burn, uh, touch it again. But see, because you touched it, you got a scar on your hand. Consequence of your actions. How, why? I can't believe in a loving God. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. You're right. God does not love you if you reject the Jesus Christ who is. Okay? <laughs> he does not love you. You know? Atheists can figure that one out. Okay? But Christianity, God loves you. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay? But anyway. Okay? Free will. Free will. Even pond scum free gracers. They, they use it for a license to sin, but... Even some of them can have done pretty decent at defending free will. Now, they do it so they can justify their sins. But the fact is, man has free will. And anyone like a Calvinist, 
uh, coming along saying that you don't, they're heretics. Okay? Not a slave. Even though John MacArthur wants you to think you are. <clears throat> Verse 19. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them. But they would not give ear. As many as received him. As many as received him. God does the saving. God does the saving. But God doesn't force you to go the elect way of the cross. Okay? And yes, son. That's, you, you, you're still, okay, praise the Lord. Uh, the elect, God elected the way of the cross there, son. Yes, yes. And when you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and, and have the hell scared out of you, the fear of the Lord, see, the lesser we call out to the greater. But see, man's will, just believe. Have a cookie. Hey, I'm I'm elect because of my skin color. I blah 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 blah. Okay, I will. I will. I will. The exalting of man. The exalting of man. The will of man. Okay, all right. But they would not give ear, and as many as received him, choice, free will, received him. Free will. Those who believe that he is the son of David. Okay? And the capitalist spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And... <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're crazy if you think, see, and this is another telltale thing of this progression, evolutionary Christian mindset of progressive Christianity, meaning man getting better in time. You look outside your door sometime, Jack. You see these, these unbelievable woke people with their bizarre reactions to the whole American president thing. It's, I, I really do question if some of those are actually staged. How, I, I mean, but there again, is man getting better? <laughs> there are people, yeah, man's evolving. No, man's de-evolving, if, if anything. Or man is evolving into something even far more wicked than that of before. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, um, some of these woke people and their reaction to the president thing here in America, I, I again, I, I sent one video to a select uh, thing of brethren, uh, I didn't send it to you brother, uh, brethren overseas, why, why do you care, you, you already know, but it was like, uh, it's like, wow, wow, and you're going to tell me that man's getting better? Progressive evolutionary Christianity? Well, after the death, burial, and resurrection, man instantly became more righteous and more better just by that alone? No. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. As many as received him, that's the son of David. And the others, ah, free will, free will. Another one, Second Chronicles 33. Second Chronicles 33. You're missing out if you don't ever read First Second Chronicles, First Second Kings. A lot of instruction and in righteousness in there. Second Chronicles 33, Manasseh. 
Manasseh. One of the worst kings in the history of Israel. I probably, personally, I'd say he was the worst. Ahab was pretty bad, too. Ahab was very bad. But Manasseh, but see, the beauty about Manasseh is he got right with God. You know, Manasseh, one of the worst kings in the history, even Hebraic Jews, it's like, yeah, Manasseh, he was, he was pretty bad. But yet he got right with God. And I believe he's in heaven. And see, something like that, the Jeffrey Dahmer thing is a great way, especially with a free gracer. Okay, especially with one of them. You know, and then it comes up, you think Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven, and you think I'm lost because I just believe in him. See, uh, yeah, I do. I'm better. Yeah, you, you sure are, aren't you? <laughs> that, that saints, you know, saints, saints fall. We can have a moment where we, you know, put up the dukes. But you know what's going to happen when it's the four walls and the seal and, and the floor? Don't you, brother? Don't you, sister? There's only so far that we can go <clears throat> until it stops. See, that has an end with the saints. And if we persist, God will end it for us. Okay? All right? But Manasseh, talking about him. Uh, 2 Chronicles 33, 9 and 10. So Manasseh made Judah, or Ma Manasseh, made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. We see that today. Christianity are doing things that the heathen, that um, Muslims and stuff like that, you know, it's like, you know, again, the wicked free gracers with their profanity and their glorification of pornography. And a Muslim is like, those are Christians. <laughs> God loves you, those are Christians, yeah. Verse 10. The Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken choice to those who received him. Those and these people, but they would not hearken. Dear friend, whoever you are, God is not the monster that Christianity has made him out to be. God does not force salvation on you. God does not force you to remain in the hands of Satan. His will will be done, but when it comes to salvific matters, you got to choose to go that way. He saves you! But he doesn't point the gun at your head. You're going that way to the cross. No. Our faith is the answer to his grace. And when he calls you the way of the cross, he's not, come on, come on, come on, you're going that. No. Because if that were the case, then the decision would have been made for you. Man has free will. And another one, Jeremiah 13. Jeremiah 13, not Estras. Jeremiah 13, 10 and 11. Jeremiah 13, 10 and 11. This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, Imagination. And what can feed the imagination but the will to be deceived, the will to exalt yourself? And walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle 
which is good for nothing. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, you can liken this in context to modern underwears, okay? So have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel, and the whole house of Judah, Seth the Lord, that they might be unto me for people, and for name, and for praise, and for glory. But they would not hear. They made the choice. And the body of Christ is supposed to be representatives, ambassadors of Christ. Then you have these Christians who are arrogant, who are pompous, and also who glorify and justify sin and profanity. They're Christians. See, th this, this is why, people, this is why I believe that we as saints need to back <laughs> You keep your disgusting Christianity. You go right ahead. I'm not a Christian. And, dude, isn't it not obvious that Christianity is getting worse? <laughs> Monday's video will be in the description box, by the way, okay? <laughs> Monday's video, I can't remember what it's called, okay, will be in the description box. Those are Christians. And look at how they exalt themselves. And what? Okay. An idol is always the extension of the true idol. And what perpetuates, what drives that? See, brother, the will of man is actually very strong. Look at it. Look at it. Look at Christianity. The one guy you were telling me about. Okay? And besides, what God did he go to? Is he, well, I got clean like that, blah, blah. Or was it, you know, the Lord had mercy on me. And the Lord did, wow. I'd almost be interested. Almost, you don't, don't, if you want to, brother, fine, that's up to you. But uh, I, I would be interested to hear a little. It's like, okay, let me hear how this guy was putting his thing. Okay? But anyway. 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 But they would not hear. Free will. Free will. Go back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse... 13, John chapter 1, come on, verse 13 now. Let's read verse 12 again. But as many as received him, those who, hey, that's the Messiah, made the choice. Not at gunpoint. God's the one who saves you. Yes, but he's not forcing you by coercive means to go away that he has chosen. Or else you would be a robot. You would be a slave. Okay? God wants you to make the right choice. And then scripture proves this beyond a shadow of a doubt. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of of the flesh nor of the will of man there it is but of God the will of man look at that verse how is will of man encompassed there hey through blood sweat and tears we're going to get this done if you ever wanted something so bad that you would you would sacrifice anything to get it? When I was a lost man looking for a gratification, you know, I would do things like that myself as a lost man. So if someone claiming to be saved 
has a dramatic change turnaround, but yet is still lost, that that don't be so surprised by that because the will of man is actually very powerful. But the will of man there, the will of man, okay? And see, the will of man, the will of man that drives, the will of man that drives. Isaiah 14, verses 13 on to verse 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will. I will. I will. I will. And then when you have that, what gets the glory? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, comes from himself. For he is a liar and the father of it. Second Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses, come on, now Revelation, verses 19 on to 21, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 on to 21, if my fingers will get there. Now, will of man that we see in John here, in verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Look at how that is uh, structured in that verse. Okay? All right? Look at it. Catholic priest. Woody, woody, woody. <laughs> Turns the wine into blood. Abracadabra, hocus pocus. Flesh cookie. Will of man. Will of man in this context, especially in context to verse 12, not a good thing, is it? But see, if our will matches the will of God, what he wants for us. But see, still, you got to remember, our spirit and soul are still housed in this. But, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 on to 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Prophecy, Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. There was a video where we talked about this, and I don't remember which one it was. You had asked me about this uh, very thing here. Um... I can't offer. If you, brother, you see this, uh, you asked me about this, remember? Uh, I can't offhand, sitting here, remember what video was done where we addressed that. If you do, put it in the comment section, okay? Help me out, okay? Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Oh, Rome. It's like, you know, oh. Don't read too much scripture because you'll get messed up. you got to come to us to help you interpret it. Or, hey, if you really want to understand scripture, you got to buy my four-point four course or whatever. Or you got to get my commentary thing like John MacArthur does. It's stupid. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Now look at that. And look at that in also verse 13 about the will of man. So what does this tell us? That the will of man can, number one, do things of their own flesh. 
They can also produce things of private interpretation, like I have this secret uh, knowledge that people don't have, and you got to buy my book to get it, right? And also prophecy. They can prophesy out of their own heart, okay? So the two times will of man appears in Scripture. It doesn't look too good, does it? doesn't look too good, does it? Okay? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. See, our will ought to be to please our Father. Our will ought to He increase and we decrease. Our will ought to be <laughs> This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I, the least of all men. But you got these Christians. Look at how pious I am. I'll attack you all day, eviscerate you brutally with relentless attack, but yet everybody in, in their whorish manner comes and like, hey, we're all buddies after it's all said. It's, that's, no. Or another, even I think more grotesque, hey, look at me, look at my pedigree, look at what I am. Uh, I fast twice in the week, look at I, 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 me, me, me. And of course, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the capital W word was made flesh. God became flesh. Flesh never becomes God. Unless you're a Catholic. And then, I look at that one. Woody woody. Yeah. And those who, without the understanding of that, take offense in a gate because to them, flesh is God. Especially when it's well-ordered, well-structured. Looking up at a uh, six-foot-four buckthorn, huh? Yeah. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among them. We beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jeremiah 44, too. Jeremiah 44. See, what God did this dude pray to? Okay. And he, okay. And, you know, like I said, a five-year span, people grow at different at different lengths, brother. They do. They do. That could be intuitive. Um, that could be. Okay? But what you described, especially, uh, okay, uh, five years, there's no real set time limit for when one grows from babe on to one who has their senses exercised by you. I'll tell you this. If you're claiming to be saved and you've claimed to be saved for 10 years and you're still like, you know, soul annihilationism, uh, that the authorized version isn't the perfect and errant word of God and you don't, you know, you reject the redemption of the purchased possession, it's by grace. For, and then that's a little, you're claiming to be saved for 10 years and the Lord hasn't said, no, 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 no. That's different, okay? When you claim to have a decade and you don't even get... You think it's by grace through faith from the Garden of Eden and to the King? Whoa, hello! Uh, brr, okay, that's different. Okay, half of that. Okay, half of that. There is the possibility of having some afterbirth there. There is. You, you can't deny that. But like it's like you had uh, kind of vaguely described. It's like, uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Besides, soul annihilationism. <laughs> hey, if your if you if your soul's just gonna be burnt up and that's it, why get saved? Huh? Why? 
soul annihilation. And stupid. But anyway, where are we going? Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44. Man's will is powerful, man. Look at what look at what the will of man has done. Look at what the will of man does for Christianity. Hey, look at the will of man for these little denominations. Look at the will, look at look at history and you see the product of the will of man. Look at artificial intelligence, the will of man. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. But look at what the Lord said. Not my will, but thine be done. And we as saints are to be submissive unto his will. Hence, our will fixes it unto his will, meaning that we are willing, willing to put aside, I, 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 me, me, me. Now, see, the thing is, though, you got to remember, not even Paul, the greatest of the saints, could do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay? And remember, Paul called himself also a wretched man. Just, just to remind you of that this week. Part. But, Jeremiah 44, here's a perfect example. You know this, brother. The Hebraic Jews just got kicked out of Jerusalem. Or they, you know, Nebuchadnezzar came and just wiped the snot out of them. Just whooped them pretty good. It's like in the book of Revelation. The body of Christ isn't there. And men are going to blaspheme God and not repent of their, uh, of their pharmacia, of their sorceries and all their idols under such duress. They're not going to do it. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Jeremiah 44, 15 on to verse 17. Then all the men which knew that their wives, oh boy, had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt to, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Free will, and we will not. Idolatry, deck the halls. <clears throat> Idolatry is the extension of the true idol, ye shall be as gods. But what drives that ye shall be as gods? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Actually, brother, how is that possible? Man's will, you know. We can't will things into existence, but we can be driven to an idolatry to do anything to make it happen, especially when it's something that you want. And I can imagine that, you know, a guy who has turned that quickly, but yet the Lord didn't do it. They're welcome. I mean, hey, if you really want something, like to give up alcohol, to give up smoking, you know, it's like, I want this. How am I going to go about to do it? Go to the God who is? Okay. You can't do it by yourself. You need me. You need me. You can't. You're, you're, you're just man. And see, if you do it, you get the glory. And Satan, they go to Satan. All this will I give to thee if you fall down and worship thee. And worship me. All will be thine. See, flesh again. Okay flesh again. Verse 17, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, that's the Roman Catholic Mary, okay, and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. 
Let's read to verse 19. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and pour out our pour out drink offerings onto her, the wine, okay? We have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and poured out our drink offerings onto her, you know, the wine that the Jesuit priest makes <laughs> down the blood, did we make cakes to worship her? The flesh cookie? I do this because you've noticed in Roman Catholic things that the flesh cookie is perfectly round. It's Baal worship. They do this. The I've seen this too with my own eyes, not just on video, where they rise the sun, S-U-N. It's Ra, you know, the American dollar with the uh, symbol of Ra on it with the Freemason thing on there. <laughs> and your father's helped make this nation, huh? Anyway, anyway, did we make cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings onto her without her men? Yeah, because they, they got the men to go along with it. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Now, in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, uh, but before, but before we go to that, before we go, go to Job. Go to Job. Go to Job. Uh, you, you need to see this. The Lord, when the Lord gives a testimony of you, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all. I, that's I just I want to hear that. I want my Father when I stand before Him at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't want you to be behind me. I don't want you. I'd rather, hey brother, I would rather stand behind you. I, I want to be the very last person who's at the judgment seat. I do. Let, let everybody else go before me, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? Because I don't want anyone to be behind me. It's like, we're going to take a while and you're going to learn about me as I'm going to learn about you the things that we right now don't know about each other we're going to know about each other at the judgment seat of Christ you know rabbit here you know I, I, I just I like um, like so many brethren that the Lord has brought into my life so many and, and sisters too and you know it scares me you know sometimes when I think about it it's like you know Lord I want to be at that judgment seat looking at you and all these things that I've done as a saint I, I can imagine my that sweetheart um, a brother um, from Ohio and uh, a brother from Croatia, and sister from Wales, and sister from Ohio, and and uh, you know, one from Oregon, and uh, you know, uh, all our and a, bro a brother from Georgia, all and brother Alexander, and uh, from Dakota, and uh, and all the all these sweet, lovely brethren and sisters behind me at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, but let that roll around in your head for a little while there. <laughs> or are you going to be so boastful? Well, look at what I do. Look at my pedigree. I'm not going to get off on that. I'll just get angry again. But in the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 8. See, God gives a testimony of Job. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Father, 
said that of Job. Don't miss the significance of that. We've talked about that in the, the, the two-part video about Job. Okay? And also, Job 2, <laughs> verse 3. Again, this, you don't get any better than this. You don't get any better than the Lord himself, you know, about Job. You, you don't. Okay? And the Lord said unto Satan, uh, Job 2, 3. Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. That's the father saying that of Job. So the Lord gave testimony of Job, even though Job messed up, okay, and needed to be, you know, brought down to earth. Okay, even though God's testimony of Job stands. So when you go to Genesis chapter 11, you see God make another similar statement about mankind. And then when we look at this, brother, how, how is it possible for someone to have such a complete turnaround, so dramatic and drastic, and yet the Lord isn't the author of it. See, God knew what man is capable of. But see, one thing that man is not capable of, unless you're a Catholic, unless you're a stupid free gracer, okay, you can't save yourself. That we cannot do. Oh, through labor, through whatever, we can achieve a lot of things. But we can't become God. And that was Satan's lie. Ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And the whole earth, uh, chapter 11, 109, in Genesis. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us, make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower. Why? Whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name that we, lest we be scattered abroad, abroad upon the face of the earth. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. Us, us, everybody getting together. What was the what was the will behind this? Was this done absent of their will? No, it wasn't. Was God forcing it on them? No, obviously not. Was the devil? No. They made the choice. Their will drove them to what? Make a tower that reached unto heaven to make a name for themselves. Ye shall be as gods. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Isn't that interesting? You said the guy was safe for what? Claims to be said safe for five years and believes all this crazy stuff. There could be a thing for afterbirth, you know, still having novice tendency. There is there, but five years, huh? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. And hey, there's other people, you know, say for five years. The one guy who commented is like, I'm still kind of new at this. Okay, yes, praise the Lord. At least you, <laughs> you know that. Okay, that's good. That's good. That is. It's like, you know, I've only been saved for five years and I'm still really not. Praise the Lord. Nothing wrong with that, man. Okay. I've been saved for 16 years. I still, I make a, you know, the evidence in the videos. I make mistakes. I'm not a perfect Englishman or a perfect uh, King James Bible believing Christian. Oh, God forbid. God forbid. You know, I'm not perfect. Okay. You want to be perfect? You can be perfect in heart. Yes, you can. Perfect in this? No, you can't. 
You want to be perfect otherwise besides heart? Sure. You got to be dead. Okay? But they wanted to make a name for themselves and have a tower that reaches up to heaven. Ye shall be as God. I will exalt my throne. Okay? My throne. I will be like the Most High. Their will drove them to make a tower that they may be as gods. And what did they do? They started to build. They started to put things together to make it happen. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded, a precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? In the Old Testament, we see that God would appear as a man at random. Okay? So he came down, meaning God right there in a physical form. A man. Okay? And the Lord, verse 6. Oh, well, that does. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Verse 6. It's important to understand that, brother. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, in context, everyone getting together, and this is what they do. But don't skip past what the Lord just said. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God is saying that when man wants to make something of himself apart from the Lord, and they go to build a tower, their will drives them to build a city and a tower that reaches on to heaven. And then you get other, like, you know, Christianity. Look at, they're all, and God loves you. They all get together, right? They're all one language, right? Well, supposedly, okay? They get together. I'm sure the dude is going to the church building, right? If not, hey, whatever. But, you know, whatever. This, they begin to do. Now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God is testifying that man's will, when man wills to be like God. Oh. Oh. Hmm. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Verse 7, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. Confuse and confound are two different things. Okay? That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. God did not destroy the city of Babel. Or Babel, excuse me. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Babel. You know where we get Babel, blah, 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 blah. First Samuel 15, 22 and 23. First, oh, whoa, whoa. First Samuel 20, uh, 15, 22 under 23. And Samuel said, talking to King Saul. Oh, we've talked about him at length. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as, as 
iniquity and idolatry. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also, he hath also, excuse me, rejected thee from being king. And 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, one verse. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 13. And look what's going on today. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm part of an exclusive elitist denomination in Christianity which is better than everybody else. And that doesn't go for just the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity. Catholicism, uh, mess, uh, no, these Methodists, they're, they're just junk. Uh, Episcopalianism, um, oh, what is it? Presbyterianism, Pentecostalism, okay? Even some of the Baptist persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> so, to hear that someone has done all this stuff but isn't saved, how is that possible? They want to make of themselves their, their own little God, which God did they pray to, okay? Um, they can pretty much accomplish almost anything, almost anything. And we just read about that. Titus 3, 10 on to 11. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, go away. Knowing that he is, that is such is subvert, subverted, and sinneth being condemned of himself. Because I will, I will, I will. When man's will, the power of man's will, usually what is, you know, and what in man's will drives what? And how does Satan go along with that? Oh, that's very simple. Uh, Matthew 16, 23, just one verse. One verse. 23, 16. Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And again, if they were looking forward to the cross, why did Peter say <laughs> what he did here in Matthew 16? Come on, guys. Yeah. Now, this offend you? The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. And you read that in John 6.63. Let's, let's go there and look at that. John 6.63. It is the spirit, lowercase s, that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Why is that lowercase s? Had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. The words that I speak unto you, they are our spirit. And they are life. Also lowercase s. But see, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6, what is the will of God? I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Why? that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, that we may be ambassadors for Christ. Okay? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, 
our Savior with seven letters, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. But as we already have looked at, God isn't going to force anyone. You have to make the choice to go that way. He will save you, but he's not going to, come on, you're going to the way of the cross. No, no, no. That is the Calvinistic God of coercion. That's not who God is. For there is one God uh, who will have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay? And John, go back to John 6. Go back to John chapter 6. Verses 26 on to 29. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat to the loaves and were filled. Because God, their God was their belly, flesh was their belly. They didn't go to him because he's the Mashiach, but it's like, hey, my meal ticket. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Question! Did he die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. They were not looking forward to the cross. They didn't know about it until it happened. So what was their faith supposed to be in? Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles. That, that he's the Mashiach, that he's God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That, you know, before the death, burial, and resurrection... That's the son of David. That's our promised Messiah. That's God. He's here to offer us the kingdom of heaven. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, that's what their faith was supposed to be in. After the death, burial, and resurrection, after it happened, it is finished. Okay? That's very simple, but the stupidity of Christianity has eschewed, blurred that. Okay? So, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. What was their belief in? Did that? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. You lying, antinomian, antinomianist, pond scum devil. Okay, the Lord rebuke you. No, it wasn't. They didn't know about it. Or else, Ephesians 3 is a contradiction. And of course, you guys don't really divide the word of truth anyway. Because it's by grace for faith from the... Won't get off on that. Okay? <laughs> okay? And skip to verses 37 on to verse 40 now. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Not my will. But thine ain't will. Not my will. But thine be done. My will is to see your will done. And that I don't get any glory. But look at, look at what we talked about Monday. Those are guys, the ones that we addressed on Monday, those are men who want the glory. They want the glory. I don't. And a true saint doesn't either. A true saint doesn't. If the Lord decides to give a little glory of unto us, then his will be done. But we're not searching for it. As the Christians are. 
And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which, hath, which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Very important verse here, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son. Question. Can we see, physically see, Jesus Christ today? No. You Pentecostals, all you liars who say you saw God, no, you did not. You saw something, but you did not see God. Okay? See, he was physically present <laughs> there. Okay? He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Their faith was to be in him as the Mashiach, not in the death, burial, and resurrection. So, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Seeth the Son. He was standing physically present. That's why the unpardonable sin is not relevant for us today. Why? Because where is he? He can be seen through his body, but he himself physically, we can't see. You'll be able to see him during the kingdom of heaven. That's why there's no faith required during the kingdom of heaven. It's all works because he's going to be on a throne in Jerusalem, you idiot. I wasn't, I'm referring to a free gracer. They're idiots. Okay? So, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But see, after the death, burial, and resurrection, the Lord wants, wants everyone. He will. He will everyone to be saved. But see, you have free will. God doesn't force you. And uh, not everybody, you wicked universalists, is going to be saved. Because God doesn't force anything on you. Okay? 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3, 2 Peter 3, verses 8 on verse 9. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. What does this mean? God, time, doesn't matter to God. It is not November 13th, 12.53 p.m. in heaven. Okay? See, like I've done before. Time. The timeline of earth and man. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The timeline of existence. God is here. He can see the beginning and the end. Time doesn't exist to God. We are bound by time. Okay? Look at look at your sagging sin suit. Okay? Thermodynamics. Things deteriorate in time. But yet, Christianity says we're getting better with time. Christianity! Veiled evolutionary progressive Christianity. Uh, uh, atheists and evolution. You're an idiot if you believe in evolution, by the way. Okay? Just, just saying. Okay? Um, and here, I've the evolution. Here, I'll put something evolution. Okay? In the description box for you about evolution. Okay? All right? Okay? God is not bound by time. We are. This world is. Okay? But there will come a time when this no longer is applicable. Okay, the new heaven and the new earth, the seventh and final dispensation, eternity with no sin. What brings in the seventh and final dispensation, eternity? Lake of fire, the destruction of Satan, sin, and death? Yeah, then eternity, the seventh and final dispensation. Time eventually will end. When you die, time ends. Your eternity in hell and heaven or in hell begins. You might be cute while the great white throne of judgment. Okay, sure, you get a break, but then you're you're cast off into the lake of fire to burn for eternity. You know, and the thing these idiots 
<laughs> uh, hell is an eternal. Okay. Okay. Okay, Andy. <laughs> Anyway, 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 that's what that means. A thousand years is as one day. Time doesn't matter to God. He is outside our boundary of time, okay? He's not bound by time. He is eternal, okay? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Yeah, because he's not bound by our time. But is long suffering to us word, meaning mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And yes, repentance means a turning from something. You like to go to Ezekiel. It's like, I don't want anyone to perish, but that they would turn. See, the repenting that you do unto salvation. It's exactly the, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. You ain't good, see. You're not a good person. You were not worth Jesus Christ dying for. God so loved, he gave, okay? All right? And despite your merit badge there, Mr. Buckthorn, that you wear and boast about and rub in people's faces, uh, those mean nothing. Those mean nothing. Okay. The repenting is that repenting of yourself. And see, for the lost, and someone who is their own God. Now, will of God, will of God, you look up that phrase, interestingly enough, will of God appear in the, uh, a lot of books of the New Testament. Hmm. Interesting. We're not going to look at all 32 of them. But, Romans. Romans 1. Romans 1. Hmm. I'm glad the Lord was, was not satisfied. He was not happy with me trying to do this on Monday. There was a lot that he wanted to be said. <laughs> and a whole different direction. Romans 1, 7 out of 10. To all, the, <clears throat> to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, <laughs> called to be Christians. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Called to be saints. You, you go on someplace with your little Christianity. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, Lord says, in the gospel of his Son. Did you notice that? My spirit? That without ceasing... I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul wanted the Lord's will to be done. So he was submissive unto the Lord's will. His will was to be willing to allow the Lord's will to have free reign. Okay? Could he do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Acts 21, no. That's why, that's why you got to abhor the sinless perfection idiots. But let's continue. Making request. If by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come on to you. Hmm. Then you go on to read about how well, verse 11, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. So see, the will of, he was hoping for the will of God to send him to the brethren. Why? To strengthen, to exhort. Not to boast about their lineage 
or their ministry or all this stuff and rub it into your face and say, I'm better than you. No, but that they could, that he could strengthen and encourage the brethren. Okay? Romans 8. Romans 8. 19 on the 28, of course. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. What does that mean, not willingly? Okay? Once the Lord saves you, we want to go home. Okay? All right? But see, we are suffering the consequences of Adam and Eve. Okay? All right? That's what that means. <clears throat> For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but reason by him, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The bondage of corruption. This is going to die. Everything is getting worse. Man is progressively getting worse, if anything. Okay? Things deteriorate in time. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Uh, and this is on the backup channel. Okay. Um, everyone groans. We saints. I wanted to go home yesterday. I don't want to be here anymore. Christianity doesn't want the saints here either. They want us to go. Rome wants the saints to go away. That way they would have free reign. See. So both. Both the devils and the saints, we don't want to be here. The devils don't want us to be here. But see, God's will be done. If we're still here, there are still people that the Lord is going to save. That's what I believe. Okay? And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the capital S spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of the body, the redemption of the purchased possession. Come up hither. Okay? We have this, everyone's groaning, uh, you know, all the, all the creation, including lost. We want to go home, and the devils want us to get out of here so they don't have the body of Christ uh, being a fret to them. Okay? That will be in the description box as well. All right? But, yes, I want to go home. You want to go home. Christians, hey, I want to stay around and boast about myself. Go ahead, pal. Bravo, go ahead. Okay? We want, we want to get out of here. But see, God does have a purpose for your life. To serve him. To boast him through you. Not you. Through him. There's a huge difference. It's subtle, but it's huge. You've seen it, dear brother. Yes, you have. Praise the Lord. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the, uh, the evidence of things not seen. In the garden they saw God the Father, and in the kingdom of heaven you're going to see God sitting on a throne. Hey, hey, idiot, how can it be by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> <laughs> How it can't be. <laughs> Woo! But see, they don't people don't want to hear the truth. That's how 
you devils, you little sweet pie. That's how you guys are able to get away with the nonsense that you're getting away with. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Do we see the Lord Jesus Christ physically? No. No, we do not. We can see him um, um, lifted up. We can see him as present in his body, the saints, but he himself personally? No. Likewise, the capitalist spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit capitalist itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yeah, we, we want to pray for what we want, don't we? And there's, you know, we, we are to make our requests known unto God. But, you know, there comes a time when you're praying to the Lord where it's like you need to be, you want to be praying for other people. The only one, by the way, who can tell you what or how to pray is the Lord. A man hath no right, Rome, okay, with their missile, okay, uh, and even the Talmud and stuff like that, okay, no man has any right to tell you what or how to pray. And the Our Father was a Hebraic Jewish prayer for Hebraic Jews, okay? The structure can be used, the actual words themselves, okay? Um, uh, the Lord's Prayer, I think we have a video on that. Um, I think we do. I think we do. I'm pretty sure we do. Uh, actually, the Lord's Prayer is John 17. Okay, let's continue. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the capitalist spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, God will reveal his will to you, saint. But see, as a saint with the Father in you, you still have to make the right choice. And we know that all things work together for our good to them that love God, to them who are the called, saved. God has called you, saint, the way of the cross. Hence, you are the called, not like Calvinism teaches, okay? God chose the cross. He has called you the way of the cross. Death to self first. So, to them who are the called, the called, according to his purpose, the saved. Okay? Okay? Distinction of death crosses death. Crosses death. And you got, you know, you got the, you know, the antinomianists who talk about the cross, but yet there has been no death brought about by that cross of themselves. <laughs> Listen to them talk if you can stomach it. Okay? Romans 12, Romans 12, we, uh, in Romans 9, 19 through 24, is something that the Calvinists like to talk about. Uh, we're we're going to skip it for this video, but uh, you know, it's like, well, why didn't you talk about uh, uh, Romans 9, uh, 19 on to 24. The video for Calvinism, refuting Calvinism, will be in the description box for you, okay? So if you have any questions about Romans 9... 19 through 24, okay, here, let me put a little thing here, so in the description box, I could um, put that there for you, okay, you have any questions, check out that video about Calvinism, okay, so, but Romans 12, not Corinthians, where did you go, Romans 12, verses 1 on to verse 2, God wants all people to save, be saved, but not everybody's going to be saved, okay, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But no, the antinomianist doctrine that has infected the disgusting body of Christianity, uh, you know, hey, the more sin you do, the better it is for you. Hey, we're not even under the morality of the law, so go ahead and sin. And be not conformed to this world. 
<laughs> little conforming to the world there, aren't you there, uh, pal, huh? Yeah. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By boasting about how great you are and all your accomplishments. No. How God had mercy on someone who deserves to be dead, who deserves to be in hell. See, men, when these Christians start puffing themselves up, boasting themselves, they're conforming to the world. And what are they proving? What, are, what is it that they are giving on to their disciples? Arrogance, pride. Look at the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity. I rest my case. Hey, look at the Pentecostals with their blah, 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 blah. Look at the Catholics. I had the cookie. <laughs> We're in the Church of Christ family, huh? See, if you exalt yourself, you'll be humble. But if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. And you have Christianity doing the counter to that, exalting themselves. And you're going to try to tell me that's the perfect will of God? That's what you're conveying to people! Romans 15. Romans 15. 30 on to 33. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. 5 on to 8. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of, of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service. Look at me. Look at me. I, I got the look. I got the intonation, I got the body language and stuff like that. that you know, one thing that these uh, other, this whole disgusting mix of Christianity, the live streaming guys, a majority of them will not show their faces. When you got, I mean, when they're that bold-faced lying to people and deceiving people, uh, you know, you'd be able to see it eventually, you know, but a majority of them just refuse to show their faces. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. Not with thy service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, that he may be glorified. Not you, buddy! Buddy. Not you. The disgusting display of self-exhortation. Disgustus. Uh, anyway, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive the, of the Lord whether he be bond or free. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. And see, with the one blend of Christianity, uh, which is contrary to what we're about to read, they commit fornication. 
They, they speak with profanity. They talk about worldly subjects. They call holiness garbage. Tom prays that he isn't actually said, and even the bloke has the evidence on that. He said none of this holiness garbage. He called holiness garbage. Yeah. Yeah. They're Christians, by the way. Furthermore, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 1 and 7. Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Not to be like the world, boasting yourself, justifying sin. No, your sanctification. That ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Hey, if it feels good, do it. Huh? If it feels good, do it. Okay, shall we sin that grace may abound? Antinomianism. Yeah! God, God forbid! Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Antinomianism. Yeah! God, God forbid! That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Hey, Tom, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, being separate, other. When you got these antinomious twits, who are worse most of the times than the world. Dade Murphy, who is this crazy atheist, has a profane mouth. Comparing Dade Murphy with this one foul mouth uh, free grace guy, um, who's buddy buddy with, well, never mind, okay? Dade Murphy actually looks a lot better, behaves better than the so-called, well, he is a Christian, who justifies profanity. So that's an incident when an atheist like Dade Murphy, who uses grotesque profanity, is at least in appearance more righteous than the Free Grace News Unit devil, uh, there I said, isn't that his channel's name, uh, who justifies profanity and says the F word without even a reservation. He's not a saved man. Neither of them are saved, but Dave, Dave Murphy is better than the other guy. And Dave Murphy clearly says, I don't want Jesus. And the other one who claims to have Jesus, which he doesn't, he has Satan, uh, is worse. Verse 8, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. See, you antinomian, you free graces, you're not saved. You're not. Done. Second Thessalonians now, chapter 5. No, no, first, uh, excuse me. First Thessalonians 5, not second chapter. There is no second uh, Second Thessalonians five, is there, brother? No. Uh, chapter five, verses fourteen under twenty-three. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I know. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything. In everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus. 
Hold your place. Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Mm. Oh, uh, let me see. Verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Not happy. Content. Brad, are you happy? No. No, I'm not. You're not happy? No. No, I'm not happy. I'm content. I want to go home. I want to be with the Lord. <laughs> I love you, brethren. But, I mean, you know, hey, you know, if I go home, I, I love, wait till you get here, brethren. You'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be sad when I'm up with the Lord. Okay? I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. But see, I want, I want my Father's will to be done. That He get the glory, not me. Okay? I submit to what He wants. My will is to see His will done. And I'm still here. Hence, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth, strengtheneth me. Meaning, he can strengthen you in your poverty. He can strengthen you in your loss. He can strengthen you in your, in your rejoicing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. <laughs> Turn that, make that personal concerning me. No, I'm not a happy person. I'm not happy. No, I'm not. I want to go home, but not what I will. Thine be done. Obviously, for whatever his reason, he wants me to hear, or, or, or I'd, I'd have a stroke or a heart attack in my sleep and be, you know, you'd see Brother Alexander on the thing. He's like, oh, okay, Brother Brad went home. Okay. I don't want to be here. And see, that's also selfish, you know. Think about it. Because I want him to be glorified. And obviously, if the Lord didn't want me around, I wouldn't be here. Okay? So, me wanting to go home, which we all do, it's far better, but he has a purpose for me to fulfill as he does with you. So, whereas I don't want to be here, he wills me to be here, so with that, I am content. Thy will be done. Quench not the spirit. Capital S there. How do you quench it? Don't drink the wine from Rome. Ignore them. Don't do anything. Hey, put the scriptures away, right? Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, that's a person, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. First Peter 2. First Peter 2. We're almost done. This 
turned out to be a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> uh, oh, totally, totally. You know, you know, brother. If the Lord would have allowed that other video to go up, I think it would have been like you would have been like, Brad, wait a minute. Yeah, you'll find out eventually what I'm talking about. First Peter two thirteen on to seventeen. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Christians like to take this as like, well, obey every ordinance of man. And they'll twist this like you need a piece of paper on your wall to be a pastor. And you do for Christianity in the bail houses. But what happens when God says, cover your lip? When Rome tells you, cover your nose, what do you do? Hmm? What happens when God says, thou shalt not kill? But because you didn't want to uh, wait till you were married, and you came together with somebody, and now you're with child, so you're going to go kill the child. What do you do? Hmm? What do you do when what man wants is contrary to Scripture? Do you come, well, we're supposed to do it. Uh, no. What do you follow? Come on, that, that ought to be common sense. And what's funny, it's not funny, it's laughable. Common sense seems to be lacking in Christianity. Haven't you figured that one out? Yeah. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, Men who act as if they say in their heart there is no God. Obey the law. Don't speed. Don't steal. Okay? That kind of stuff. All right? All right? You don't pay taxes. That kind of stuff. All right? Okay? That's what that's talking about. That doesn't mean if the law of man is directly contrary to God that you go along with what man says Contrary to what God says. That's not what verse 13 is talking about. Okay? As free. And not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Like the gods of lasciviousness. They, they're free to go on in sin. And hey, don't worry about it. I just believe and receive. Okay? Okay? Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. And 1 Peter 4, verses 1 on to verse 11. That will be done. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Same mind. The mind of Christ. For us, servants. The mind of Christ is to be a servant. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he should that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. We already covered what his kind of what his will is. Stain from all appearance of evil, that you present yourself, um, you know, um, your body, a living sacrifice, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? How are the free gracers proving their God? That it's okay to swear, talk about graphic sexual content, and to attack each other relentlessly and brutally and make threats against people and wish them dead and just profanity throughout, but yet they love each other and they're all buddy-buddy and then they go back, spit venom. Or... To boast about my pedigree. To boast about what I have done. Look at me. Look at me. Look at how great I am. And look at how feeble you are. Look at me. I'm the great so-and-so. Lust of men. Pride of life. For the time past of our, law, of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, like the free gracers do, 
lusts, excess of wine, reveling, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. <laughs> You're right, pal. I'm not a Christian. I, 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 I'd rather have my foot cut off than to be associated with a Christian. With Christianity. Like I said, there are saints out there for whatever reason. You want to, I don't get it. That's your problem. I love you. You want to call yourself that? That's between you and him. Okay? But anyway. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. You're too extreme. <laughs> yeah. We can't be extreme enough, actually, I think. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick alive and the dead. Okay, and what are we reading to, to verse 11? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the, look at that, lowercase says spirit. Hmm. The gospel was preached unto them that are dead. Lost people, dead in trespasses and sins. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity, self-sacrifice among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. No, there's the one brother that was from Oregon who unfortunately I missed his call and he, he drove from Oregon to some other place and he was in Illinois and it's like I missed it because the phone was in the air and it's like, oh, it's like, you know, hey, and hey, brother, you see this and you're wherever, next time you're in Illinois, I gave you our address, just call. It's like, hey, Brad, I'm at the door. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You know, you're a saint, you're a brother, you're a sister. You show up. Our door is open to the brethren. Our, our, our door is open to the brethren. Okay. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Why? So God will get the glory. Not because you were trained in hermeneutics. Who's hermen anyway? Or that you are, are mimicking, uh, emulating someone else. Okay? If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. That God get the glory that you don't boast yourself of what you've done. And look at my pedigree. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, brother, it's actually quite simple. Um, the will of man is very strong. It really is. We, we, read, we saw God himself gave testimony of what man's will could do. But you know what your will can't do? You can't save yourself. You are not God. And that's the deception. That, that's, you know, the... Uh, what is it? Um, the deception of the ages. He shall be as God. Don't go to evil. That's going to be it for this video. I hope this answered your question, brother. It's not. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. Um, <laughs> it's it's full of wonder, but it's not a surprise. Thank you for watching if you do. Thank you, brethren, dear saints. I love you. Please keep your servant in prayer. 
please. Okay, we need your prayers. We need all the prayers. Always need your prayers, brethren. And thank you to those of you who do pray. Okay? Thank you. He must increase. We must decrease. Not mine, but thy will be done. That's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. It's 1.35, or excuse me, 1.36 p.m. So by the time you see this, it might be 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. I don't know. So I love you. See you in the next video. Whenever that may be.